so going back to the the other topic slightly, I, I remember I saw a post that was from a I think a Japanese Twitter user uh. where they had uh, they had kept a track of uh, all the ages I that saw mangakas that. Yeah. passed away, mm-hmm. and it was something like being a mangaka is like the deadliest job in Japan. It's your one of the deadliest compared to the yeah. average life expectancy yeah. of a Japanese person. I think mangakas died twenty. It was like, years. It was like sixty something. Yeah, yeah, can, twenty can you years before everybody else. It was something crazy. Yeah, uh, and even then, like there was, it, you know, it's pretty well documented that I think uh, Oda had a pretty. Uh, Oda, sorry, um, the Toriyama had a pretty healthy work life balance too. But mm-hmm. I wonder, you know, it's it's crazy. I mean, it's concerning. Like, why why do so many mangakas pass away so early? Yeah, I, I mean, mean, because the schedules are just so yeah, messed I don't up, know. I mean, especially I, for weekly so stuff like one. in you it, know it was on Twitter, all the all the shonen magazines, right? Like yeah, you know, as you said, like Toriyama had like you know the 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 original Dragon Ball manga that Toriyama mm. actually drew ended quite a long time ago, so he's been kind of just like doing you know all the Dragon Quest stuff mm. and like mm-hmm. you know a bunch of other just like art based stuff that is not on a weekly basis. So yeah. you know he he's somewhat you know, had a pretty healthy life, as you said, but man, I'm scared for like people like Oda, you know, or like, yeah. you know, people who have just had like 20, 30 plus years series still somehow writing weekly. Like, yeah, scary. It's, it's insane what the it's like work schedule they must have. And, you know, mm. a lot of the fan base are like, no, it's oh. still not enough. We need more chapters. <laughs> And uh, oh, one wow. thing that even confuses me even more is when you have like the odd manga that are releasing two, that are working on two projects <laughs> at once. Yeah, like, right. Uh, what's what's the Kaguya Sama's Akasaka Aka? Yeah, 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 yeah. Doing Oshinoko. Well, Akasa- and- Well, the thing with Akasaka though is that he's he's doing Kaguya Sama. He's, yeah. he's he does the story and art for that. But with Oshinoko, he's only doing the story. Oh, which sorry, is like, sorry. which look, it's still a lot, but at least he's not drawing both of them. You know, like if he was drawing both of them, he would actually, he would be like the mood art of manga. Like yeah. it'd just be like, that would be too much for a person to do. Oh, do you know, do you know someone who is doing both? Uh, the- <laughs> Talk, talking about the goats of manga, yeah. right? The fucking manga of Rent a Girlfriend. Oh my god! Decided gosh. so he's he like he's like doing Rent a Girlfriend, and I believe in his spare time he's like. I'm gonna make a manga about a sister harem. Uh, and, and I'm like, why, why, why would you do this? Who let this man cook? Who let him into the kitchen? Why, why, do, why, why do you get the talent of like infinite manga releases? Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know if they're both weak. I don't know if that's a weekly one as well, but I believe that Rent a Girlfriend is still definitely on going. Meanwhile, um, Togashi is still on a six year hiatus. Yeah. Like, <laughs> life's not fair, man. Shonen, Shonen Jump Magikas can, uh, can, can never seem to catch Jesus up. Jesus Christ. Oh, but, uh, I sent the link in the chat, but it got community noted. So I'm actually curious. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? I mean, but I sent it in the chat. Do you want to look at it? I don't I can't oh, read okay. it. I don't, it's I don't all, know it's all in Japanese, so, oh phone. shit. Okay. Uh, oh, I see. Okay. So the community note essentially <laughs> is talking about how this survey, mm-hmm is mostly consisting of mangakas who are born roughly in the mid to late 80s. Uh, right. As of right now, are uh, in their like thir- late 30s, early yeah. 40s. Yeah. And so it and so the the, right. the data set is a bit skewed. Right. Oh, okay. It's not okay. it's not, you know, it's not referencing any mangakas from like the 60s and 70s. Oh, right. Okay, okay. okay. Right. So but okay. still, I mean, I think there's something to be said here, even if the data set is a bit skewed, that like you just look at, you know, some of these, I mean, you know, there's a lot of like pretty notable mangakas there. And just the fact that again, like you very rarely see mangakas, you know, or see news about mangakas passing away in their, you know, 70s and 80s, which mm-hmm. is the av- the average age of a, of a Japanese person, mm-hmm. um, at least countrywide, I think, really just goes to show that like, yeah, this job is incredibly taxing on you physically and yeah. mentally. That it's not really a surprise that some of these authors are passing away early because, and you know, it's always due to like, you know, some kind of like very, uh, you know, sudden complication health-wise, yeah. right? Like it's, you know. Well, I, th- I, th- I think, you know, going on back to like mangakas who can do multiple series and some manga mm. who are like really, really struggle. Um, I, th- I think it's, you know, the thing about a creative kind of like 
job that I found is mm. that creative, you know, you can work an office job and you can mostly predict, okay, I can get X amount of work done in X amount of hours. But with a creative job, it's so hard to predict. Mm. Like there, there is a certain amount of workload and productivity that needs to be done. Most of the time that is dependent on like an external company on a, or a deal you have. Mm. Like, you know, you have to release this chapter weekly and some people really, really struggle with that. And uh, some people uh, have spare time with it. So, like I remember meeting the author of Fairy Tale. And uh, he started a YouTube channel because he ha- he just had like too much spare time in between. <laughs> in between Wait, uh, isn't Eden right. Zero still going though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's weekly, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How the fuck? Because he's <laughs> he's a fucking machine, man. Like he. Yeah, so we all just have different <laughs> different yeah. like bandwidth. Yeah, for yeah. People to do stuff like that. It's, yeah, it's it's, it's like. Did you see the interview between uh, George R. R. Martin and uh, Stephen King? King? Stephen yeah. King. Yeah, I did see that. Yeah, and he, he was sh- like, like George R. R. was like, "How the fuck do you write that many books?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's actually insane. Yeah, it, it's like it's and uh, you know I I definitely empath, uh, empathize with that myself because there are some days where I'm like I want to get X amount of work done and X amount of stuff written and then sometimes you know you can just like plow out two times as much as you wanted to. Well, uh, I mean you know if we're talking about Stephen King, like it's kind of not fair because you know he has. Coke on his side. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Perform- that, that'll definitely Performance help. Wait, wait, drugs. wait, wait, is this like a known fact? Yeah, he, he used he wrote- Can we Google this? He used to, apparently he he had this like period in his, in, in his life where, uh, in his career rather, where uh-huh. he was addicted to Coke. <laughs> <laughs> and that when he was, he would write like entire- Coca-Cola or? Yeah, yeah. Co- sure, let's say Coca-Cola. Okay. Yeah, so we used to do, would do so much cocaine that he had to stuff cotton up his nose to stop blood from dripping on his typewriter. And apparently while he was on these Coke binges, he would just write entire books in like a few days. And that's how he was able to like, I, I don't remember which period it was, but like, uh, yeah. that's why some of his like kind of uh, middle he, career books while he was on this Coke binge are just so weird. Yeah. I. I not, not to, you know, because I, I haven't released anything of value, so I can't really talk, but on some of his books known to be like kind of, eh? I mean, like-, like he's, done, he's done so many, the right? One, the one that comes to mind is uh, Cujo, which yeah. is the one about the rabid dog. Okay. That goes around killing people. Okay. And, uh, and I was, I remember reading that in high school. I'm like, this is fucking weird. And then yeah. I found out he wrote that in like three days on a Coke binge. Ah. And I was like, ah, that, that explains it. <laughs> it, it is kind of impressive. What you can kind of like just do when you're the goat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You could just kind of release shit like yeah. that. And it's like, I don't, know if, ba- I, I, okay, I don't know if it's bad, but I'm assuming- like Another I'm assuming, banger, Steven. I'm, I'm assuming it's just weird. And then oh yeah, you, yeah. you kind of, you know. I mean, I, obviously uh, he's I, not on it anymore, I but say it's kind of cool though. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I could say something similar about someone like, you know, Jinji Ito, where yeah, he has yeah. some oh, like goaded yeah, pieces yeah. of work. And then sometimes you read a story and you're like, what, uh, what were you thinking? What, what was the point? And I'm sure yeah. there was no point. He was just like- I like that. I like the story about the short story he wrote about like the, the cat that like uh, gets possessed by some kind of like thing and just like dismorphs into this disgusting thing. Yeah. And when you read- No, no, this is Jujito. Oh, okay, right. and, and when he, and when, uh, you know, when you read that short story, you're like, okay, I don't, I don't know what the story was about. Yeah. And apparently Jujito just wrote that because he likes cats. Okay. <laughs> and he was like, I just wanted to write one about a cat. <laughs> and I'm like, I respect okay, it. Okay. You're like, well, damn, that's been such a deep- th- Yeah, yeah, Junjito's cat diary. That's been such a deep th- thought process Yeah, here. he was like, I just really like cats. So I'm, ju- I'm just gonna I write like, this. I like cats. Yeah. And I was like, I respect it. I mean, you know, yeah. you, you can kind of do whatever you want when you're the go, which yeah. is the yeah. best, you know, which is cool. Yeah. What, what's the author of Chainsaw Man again? Fujimoto. Fujimoto. Did he make, did he make like a, have you read all of a short manga? Yeah. Did he make a short manga where the point of the short manga is that it's not that deep. Yeah. <laughs> What's it called again? The the look back, right? Look, no, no, no. Look no, back. No. Look back's the one that's goodbye, getting, Airy. No, no, no. There's there's one oh, more. Oh no, there's was, the third one. There's the there? third one that was yeah. like a. <laughs> um, I have no idea. Shit, what was it called? There, there was a third one that was like a really really short one. It was only like twenty pages long, oh, and I think the point of that was just like, bro, it, it was it was. Fuck. I'm, I, I'm gonna uh, yeah, look it up. What? Look it up. Yeah. Just look up Fujimoto Tatsuki. Short story. Uh, short story. <laughs> makes you makes you wonder uh, how many monk, how many stories are made that are just like not that deep, or the or the author just made it on a whim. Yeah, it's not his, It's not the short story collections, right? No, because he did um, that as well. 
Oh my god, what was what was it called? I can't, I can't remember. Okay, wait, wait, the hold before, on. No, that's the before Chainsaw Man short yeah, stories. Short manga. I know what you're talking about though, because I definitely read it. Music. I remember it was about music. Wait, is it called the before Chainsaw Man short stories? No, no. Well, ah. th that collection is, yeah. That's like ah. a collection of like, uh, it's like an anthology collection of short stories. Based in the same universe? Kind or? of. Oh, wow, yeah, okay. Yeah, or inspired by the same universe. I, I think it's just listen. Just, oh, just listen to the song. Just listen to the song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which killed yeah. all, <laughs> which has killed like all intellectual <laughs> debate around pieces of also, media. Also, I love how Wikipedia <laughs> labels this as, uh, under the genre of cringe comedy. <laughs> Wait, um, why is it cringe comedy? It's, it's under cringe comedy, <laughs> which is the best way to describe oh, Fujimoto's work sometimes yes. in the best way possible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I do remember this one. Uh, yeah, cause I read it and I'm like, what? was this about? Cause it didn't, I mean, it's always hard to grasp what Fujimoto's trying to say in, in any of his manga the first time it's, you I, read I, it, I, I, Yeah, it's it's interesting. Cause I think it's like super meta uh, where, where you can interpret it as like, hey, you know, sometimes people are looking at my work way too deeply mm. or mm. over analyzing it. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm I mean, I don't, I don't blame those people. He makes some fucking- like, He does make some weird shit. Like and Goodbye some... Airy, dude. Like that was like the most poignant I, I that- I read any of his stuff. Uh, oh, sure, dude, yeah. dude, Goodbye Airy is- Well, you saw Chainsaw Man, right? Yeah, you... yeah, yeah, I saw it, but I haven't read any of his. So have you, have you done, have you consumed any other pieces of his work at all? No, I haven't. Goodbye Airy is an incredible, even Look Back as well. Look Back was about like, his kind of view into like the world of creating manga, mm -hmm. basically. Um, and it's just like really good coming of age story. Uh, you should read Fire Punch, bro. Yeah, everyone tells <laughs> me about Fire Punch. That one is wild. That, that is wild. That is even more deranged than Chainsaw Man. I've heard that from everyone yeah, too. Which it's I, so good. I do want to, just haven't got around to it. <laughs> it's only what, eight volumes? Yeah, it's, yeah, quite short. it's not long at all. I, I, I Again, I've, I've wanted to, but I have a feeling that it'll get animated someday and it's gonna be glorious. I don't, I don't know if it I can. Don't know. Maybe. You say maybe. that, we always say the stuff can't be. Yeah. It's unadaptable. <laughs> and then it gets adapted and we're like, ah, oh, shit, this is fire. Yeah. It's punch. <laughs> yeah. It, if Fire Punch ever gets adapted, everyone's gonna be so hype with yeah. the first half. And then everyone's gonna be like, what else? What's, what's well, that's what they said about Vinland Saga gone. No, no, yeah, but no, is it no. That, 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 that much worse? <laughs> it's it's the not second, worse. The second half of Fire Punch is just every page is just, just what the fuck weird. is going on? Oh, okay, it's, okay. it's just yeah. weird. Well, Evangelion. <laughs> uh, yeah, kind of, kind of like that level. Of oh, like the Evangelion crowd are gonna be frothing at the mouth. Yeah, with Fire yeah, Punch. Yeah. So then, and you know, that's done well. More merchandise than God. <laughs> I, then, so I think, you know, I think it's fine. Sure. I, 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 see, I see more Evangelion stuff than, than Christian stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Although very heavily, very heavily similar kind of themes, I guess. Yeah, yeah. which is <laughs> similar thing where the, I, th I think there was a point where people were like analyzing everything about Evangelion. Yeah. And then a lot of the symbolism turned out to be, oh, I know being like, Oh, I thought it just looked. It cool. just looked cool. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah. It's like, oh, when they explode, when the angels explode, they 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 explode into the cross. Like that's obviously a reference to like Christianity. And then Arno in an interview was just like, no, nah, I just thought it looked cool. Yeah, there's no meaning uh, behind you know, it. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. Only <laughs> there's only so much you can think about. Yeah, <laughs> or yeah. he's lying, and that's just a distraction for people to stop talking about it. Maybe that's, that's what may, they maybe want you to maybe think. that's maybe that's what they want you to think. I know <laughs> you tactician. <laughs> While they make Doritos branded even Yalian. What's wrong? Think, you know, it's a, it's a, it's an allegory for consumerism, which obviously even Yalian is against. What's wrong, honey? You've barely touched your purple Doritos. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, like, oh my god, when are they gonna release that? They probably will or have. Uh, but probably yeah. have. Yeah. yeah.